Do you know that situation when you daydream and in your imagination and your inner dialogue you are at a totally different time, at a totally different space? And you are with people you haven't seen for a long time. You are with people that aren't even part of your life anymore. And in your head they are telling you things and you're having discussions with them and you see them talking. Growing up I had one favorite cousin. He was my favorite because he was the only fat person in my family. And he was also funny as hell. And I don't know if he was funny because he was fat or he was funny because of his personality. But at the end it doesn't really matter, like everybody said he was funny. I remember for example this one time he stole like 200 packages of ketchup from McDonald's and he stashed them in his room because he loved ketchup so much. Like that's the type of guy he was. But this story is not about my cousin. It's about something I realized while pondering on old memories. I remember that my favorite cousin, my fat favorite cousin, used to be a huge Steven Seagal fan. Like he was a fan of action movies in general, but Steven Seagal, Steven Seagal was his favorite. Like he used to imitate all of Steven Seagal's mannerisms and he used to reenact scenes from his movies. And when we had those hypothetical scenarios that kids always have where they compare their favorite superhero, we used to, he used to always come out on top. You know, I would say something like, no, Jean-Claude Van Damme, he has the best kicks. And my cousin would be like, yeah, but even if Jean-Claude Van Damme came up with the gun, Steven Seagal would dismantle him and just Aikido him. He tried to convince everybody how strong Steven Seagal was. And that's what it was like in the 90s, when we still had those martial arts heroes. Bruce Lee, Steven Seagal, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Those guys always had some kind of mystery or mystique around them to convince us little boys that there is something out there. There is some kind of technique or some kind of secret. And if you just find out about it, then you'd become unbeatable. That's the promise they gave us. It's the whole philosophy around it. You have to understand you have to understand to become powerful. That's how they got us. So I was kind of disappointed to see how the sentiment has changed about Steven Seagal. Because when you type in Steven Seagal on YouTube today, you'll see mostly videos exposing him. Steven Seagal the liar, Steven Seagal the fake, they're exposing him left and right. This is Steven Seagal, the most delusional man on the planet. He's still fine. Yes, I do. And alive. Seagal has secured his place in the history books as one of the silliest, dumbest liars to come out of Hollywood. Hollywood. And for good reason. At least that's what Seagal would have you believe. In actuality, the dojo he worked at while in Japan was in fact owned by the family of his wife, Miyako Fujitani. And so he's 70 years young and he has a horrible problem in interviews thinking that he's still like the most dangerous man in the world. Today he's known for his horrible straight-to-DVD movies, fondness of Eastern European war criminals, and most importantly... He often told stories of meeting agents in the field meeting powerful people through his field agent investigations and claimed to have worked as the advisor or a security detail for the Shah of Iran, Egyptian Prince Anwar Sadat and Archbishop. By attempting to make himself sound like the coolest guy ever, he became a laughing stock. And by taking himself so seriously, he has ensured literally nobody else will do the same. In fact, in 1997, he was declared a reincarnated Lama, a sacred vessel in Tibetan Buddhism. Steven Seagal is kind of serious about himself. He doesn't like, 
humor being pointed towards him. And he genuinely thinks he's one of the the most talented martial artists to ever exist. Checking them. Combine this with a quote unquote tough guy persona and nobody challenging him on anything due to his celebrity status, let him get away with a lot of stuff he shouldn't have. Most of his life. Yeah, those are pretty tough accusations against Steven Seagal, I have to be honest. But there is one argument for all those people that are trying to expose Steven Seagal. There is one argument for all those people that are saying that he's fake and pretentious. Saying that his Mr. Know-it-all demeanor is all just an act. Duh! Really? You want to tell me that Steven Seagal, the famous 90s action movie star, is just putting up an act? No shit. Like, yeah, bro, that's what actors do. They pretend. In a way, I kind of get it. People criticize his pretentiousness, and he's always acting over the top, and he's always so full of himself. But what really triggers people, in my opinion, is that they think they are smart. People think they are so smart that they can see right through his bullshit. And because they are so smart, they can just sense that he's a liar. They can sense that he's fake, he's just pretending. But if I tell you that Steven Seagal, the actor, is just playing a role, people that are exposing him wouldn't be so smart, would they? There is nothing to expose about Steven Seagal. He's a 90s martial arts movie star. His mannerisms, him acting like that, him acting like he knows it all, and him standing like this. That's his act, that's his persona. There ain't nothing to expose about him. On the contrary, there is something to admire about him. Steven Seagal never broke character. He's one of the few people on this earth that never broke character. That's his secret. You can say about the man whatever you want, but he never told anybody about his secret. There is no irony. Steven Seagal always takes himself seriously. He never gave a humble, reflective interview about the process of his acting. He never talks about stunt doubles. You never see him being down to earth and realistic. He always stayed in character. He wears his robe and his glasses. And he got offended. He got offended every single time somebody accused him of lying and acting. Which he did, but he never ever admitted to do so. He never ever gave in. Can you imagine how hard it must be to play a role your whole life? And while the mystery of so many people has been lifted and so many legends became sellouts, he remained the mystery. So many people tried to expose him, but they couldn't crack his shell. And while most magicians nowadays have told all their secrets, he kept his. You know what Steven Seagal did? He directed his own movie. His life is his own movie. And he's the main character. And all those stories around him, meeting the Russian president, meeting the Dalai Lama, becoming a real policeman, he created them. He chose to be a policeman. He chose to become friends with Vladimir Putin. He chose to travel to Japan to learn the secrets of Aikido. He is the main character in real life. Something that 99% of people on this earth cannot say about themselves. And I'll end this video with a quote. A quote that Steven Seagal has recited himself. When a tiger dies, even though we have appreciated him in life, we take his pelt and we hang it on a wall. And that's what he's remembered by.
his pelt 